Thank you, Ian. Thanks again. And uh, the next speaker is uh, uh, Simo Rutarin. Simo is uh, uh, from Finland, as you can detect from the name. Uh, he was uh, trained uh, at the Finnish Theatre Academy as an actor, and uh, uh, since then uh, became uh, a professional improviser and uh, an interaction designer. He has uh, his own company that is called uh, Pro Impro, that, uh, in uh, which he works with uh, several organizations uh, from uh, uh, health professionals uh, to corporations. And uh, he's uh, very interested in how status uh, influences uh, our behavior and interactions. Welcome, Simon. Thank you. So uh, I confirmed the facts, um, and you can spell my name. Can I hear it? The last name, Routarinne. Oh, you are speaking Finnish to me. Thank you. By the way, the weather here is uh, like Finnish summer. Um, OK, so um, I was studying improvisation uh, with this gentleman who has developed a, a special method of improvisation. It's the, most modern one uh, these days. And, and status work, status expression, is one of his specialties, and it certainly is one of my specialties too. I love it. It's so interesting. Um, it's based on animal behavior, actually. Uh, um, Keith, when he developed his method, was reading, apparently, these books. Uh, and maybe lots of more, but these I know. And from animal behavior, you can, you can see that high status poses usually um, require lots of space. You, you usually, as an animal, if you want to heighten your status, you have to um, use more space by, you know, getting your hair standing back in the back of your uh, uh, head or doing these kinds of stuff. But the surprising thing is that we humans know how to do it too. We can use more or less space with our bodies. And of course, you can detect in these pictures oh, not only high status poses, but some low status poses. And I think it's pretty clear to everyone. And, and well, one of the connections you can make is winning and losing. When you win, you uh, almost yeah, Without thinking, you uh, adopt a winning posture. And if you lose, you are not doing that. You said, I lost. <laughs> Nobody does that. So um, low status poses in animals and humans are also very different. Um, here you can see uh, in animals and here uh, with humans. Um, when you now have seen a few examples, I want you to try it yourself. Let's do an exercise. Take a partner and use high status posing and introduce yourself as an imaginary person, not with your own name, but just invent a name. Hello, I'm this and this. So please stand up and pick a partner and use high status posing and introduce to yourself to, a, to one person. Please, stand up, please. Use lots of space. Okay, and thank you. And next step, use low status posing and do the introduction again with the same partner. Could you use low status? Less space. Okay, and with your partner, sitting or standing or whatever you please, have a small discussion. Did something else change than only the posture? Have a small discussion, like 30 seconds. Okay, some of you might have noticed that the tone of your voice changed, the way you actually chose your words changed. 
or maybe something else, maybe the emotions, maybe the feeling, maybe the, 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 the quality of interaction. Um, I had a chance to actually see an interesting TED talk like two weeks ago. It was, it was fantastic. I didn't see it before. Uh, Amy Cuddy is a professor and researcher at Harvard Business School. And she actually has done a scientific research on status. And it's very interesting. And I, I want to share it uh, with you. Uh, she um, actually performed a test with a group of group of people, and uh, the instructions were that spend two minutes in high status pose, like this, or two minutes in a low status pose, and then they, are, they were measuring the testosterone levels uh, of, of, of the subjects uh, after that, and also cortisol levels. In, do, in dominant high status situations, usually testosterone levels are higher, the normal, and in stressful, um, uh, non-dominant situations, they are lower. Um, and cortisol levels are reverse. So stress gets cortisol up and dominance puts it low. So in the test, the measured factors were the level of risk-taking in gambling and also testosterone and cortisol levels. And with only two minutes of experimenting those different body postures, they revealed that risk tolerance results were this. Cortisol change was like this. And testosterone like this. With only two minutes. I found it fascinating. Uh, because two minutes is not, not a long time. Just, you know, faking. Like being like this. Even though it feels stupid or whatever, it changes your hormone levels. It changes the way you feel. So sh sh should you do it in a job interview to give a better impression? <laughs> feel more powerful and get hired? Um, Amy Carter's answer was no. No, you shouldn't. Do it secretly in the toilet before you go to the um, job interview. But don't do it before other people. And, and she didn't say anything else about that. But I will. Because why other people would see you're offensive and rude if you do that? Uh, Keith Johnstone, uh, in his status work, uh, uses the seesaw as a metaphor of what happens between two people. Uh, when they uh, move their statuses high and low. So, um, if person A raises her status, it means that person B needs to react somehow to that move. Uh, for example, if would, in, in movie theaters, when, when you have the armrest, <laughs> if somebody does something, you have to choose your reaction. And usually that causes stress, because you have to make a decision in, in the social situation, on the fly. Uh, and there's three possible uh, reactions, only three possible reactions. One of them, the most usual one, is counter-attack. It's like, no, it's, no, it's not yours, it's mine. Um, the other one is yielding. It's like, well, you know, okay, it's yours. And what do you think is the number two? Compromise? Sharing? Actually, it's no reaction. <laughs> so every reaction is one of these three. If you invent new ones, come after the presentation and tell me. Uh, the interesting thing is what happens next in the next turn of interaction? It, it's, this, this is a piece of cake. And also, this is a piece of cake. But what about the number two? Do you think it causes usually conflict or no conflict? It causes conflict. It's passive aggressive. If you don't give space, the other one has to. If, if somebody is sitting in a chair here and I say, hey, it's my place, and there's no reaction. 
Did you hear me? It's my place. So it, it's usually, it's very usually it causes conflict. Okay, so one of the things when you're using lots of space means that you give signals that you are going to attack other people's personal space. Even though you don't do it, but if you use lots of space, you are bound to do it that when you get close. So, and, and these are normal situations where people, it usually it's, it's awkward, it's stressful. Um, of course, there's intimate and trustful situations where it's pleasant. But, but these situations, are, so one of the things is, 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 is the using of space in, in um, relation to other people. And also one of the uh, issues is, is how we make eye contact. High status eye contact is very staring, very intent. I'm looking at you and I want you to know it. Me looking at you. So um, these, these are the staring contest pictures I found uh, on the net. So let's try something. Oh, these are, this is one collection of pictures too. Um, so uh, these are com combination of, of staring contest and attacking personal space. Oh, shit, what did I do? <laughs> Could you help me? Please? Do something. Oh, shit, that was clever. One more exercise. I actually invented this exercise for you. I have never tried this before, so let's see what happens. I want you to take another partner, not the previous one. Be wild, take a partner, and agree which one of you is person A, which one is person B. Please do it. And stand up, because we have to listen to a lot of stuff tonight. Very good. And agree on which one is person A, which one is person B. After that, person A is counting backwards from 100, and there's always three numbers in between. If this is too easy, pick like seven numbers or whatever. And maintain eye contact with your partner. Person B is using low status pose and is listening to the numbers and blinking his eyes and using that nodding maybe and listening very happily. And let's try this for a while. Person A is counting, person B is listening. And eye contact is important. Okay, and then switch. Person B is counting and person A is using low status and listening. Okay, and now with the stick with your partner, because now we are trying to do the same thing. You can continue from 98 or whatever the number is. <laughs> it can't be 98. Uh, <laughs> you can continue down uh, from that number where you, uh, where you uh, were when you finished. But now, maintain eye contact and use high status listening. Extend your arms and look at the partner, and walk closer. You are closing in on your partner. Try it. <laughs> and switch turns, and try the high status the other way around, once more. Okay, and please give a warm applaud to your partner and sit down. What I tried to make you feel or make you experience was an amygdala hijack. Actually, when you stare at other people, when you use lots of space, 
you might activate other people's amygdala, which means amygdala controls the fight, freeze, flight uh, reactions. And not only that, but amygdala has the power of shutting down cortex functions if it sees danger around us. So what I'm saying here is that the reason why you shouldn't do like this in social situation, in job interview, because then you are stressing the other people. Actually, you are raising the cortisol level of other people if you do that. I don't know if you experienced that in this exercise. Hopefully, some of you did that it was more difficult to count backwards when, when your partner was using high status. But usually it should happen if it's convincing enough, <laughs> the high status. Maybe if you're laughing like, <laughs> it's not so high. Thank you. <laughs>